Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Heart Publishing and Bloomsbury. It's this book here. It's called Restatement of Labour Law in Europe, Volume 1, The Concept of Employee. And it's been written by a number of people. It's been edited and brought together by uh, Bernd Vass and Goose Herma van Vos assisted by Efrosini uh, Bacchietzi and Marta Otto. I do apologise if I have not pronounced the names correctly, but I hope that that's probably uh, right. Now, we'll have a look at the book. Um, let me just explain first of all what it's about. We've given the title of it, because it's a comparative study book, basically. It's a comparative law compendium ideal for employment lawyers in the United Kingdom and abroad. And that's our basic title. Elizabeth was the lead writer on this, and we had a long chat about the book. So let's have a look at it first of all. So I've been involved in employment law over the years in one way or another, so I thought it was an interesting book to look at. There's the front of it. It's a hardback. There's the spine, and then there's the back. It's a heavy book, and uh, a very interesting one to boot. Um, on the inside cover, you've got the details about the authors. And on the inside, this is the dust, co dust cover, you've got some information about the, the book itself. Not a lot, just a little bit, just to help. Now, the book runs to some 800 pages. That's the index at the back, and it's by page numbering. And as I say, it's quite a substantial um, book. Very much, very much in keeping with the Hart Publishing um, uh, lists. There's the index there, um, so that the, the house style is clear. And then you've got a bibliography. Now you can see at the end that's a bibliography concerning references to UK materials, and likewise you've got, for instance, uh, Latvia, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and so on. So you can see they're they're basically listed by country as as the bibliography is structured. Then we get after that to uh, information. Um, again, you can see the basic structure of the book. There's footnoting, which you can, sh which you can see. Then there is uh, a certain amount of, again, you can see uh, subheadings, numeric and, uh, and otherwise. Now, at the front of the book, that's actually the blurb about the book itself, which is on the dust cover and on the inside cover there. And then you've got the actual volume itself set out there. Then the, the blurb from Hart and the acknowledgements from the general editor, who's based in Frankfurt. That's dated May 2017. Then you've got the contents. And you've got the, each chapter, you've got the name of the person who's written the actual uh, piece. And then it goes on from there. So you've, you've then got the list of the contributors. Very large number of them. I can't go through each one in detail, but there are a large number of people. Then there's an introduction, which is worth reading, which sets the scene. The European Labour Law Network, established in 2005, is where this has germinated from. Then there's a restatement text, which is uh, very helpful, I think. Then the comparative overview will we'll give... Employment lawyers here, I think, something of interest to have a, a look at, and that runs through for quite a bit, and then we get into the book itself. Now, let me just say a little bit about the book. The purpose of these reviews is to give you some idea of the, the existence of these books, so that when you're in the law library and you're looking for something, this may be one of the ones on your little tick book list that you want to have a quick look at, because it may have something that you are... Um, actually researching. Now this is what we say about the book anyway. Brexit or no Brexit, this new title from Hart uh, Publishing should attract the immediate interest of United Kingdom employment lawyers as well as their continental European counterparts. And as the subtitle indicates, the relationship between employer and employee and their reciprocal rights and obligations is the focus throughout. And the concept of employee, says the book's editor Bernd uh, Vass, is arguably the most important one in labour law, defining as it does the scope of the discipline as a whole. And I'm going to just clarify a few things here because 
Um, we are now talking about employer and employee, not master and servant, which is something you will see in older law reports and all sorts of other things. But let's get the terminology of today right, because we're talking about labour law, and I'll expand that in a minute. The point, therefore, that should be clarified is this. The discipline referred to as labour law is what we also know in the United Kingdom as referred to as employment law. And there are those who will recall the term employment law, which encompasses trades union law, known sometimes as industrial relations law. So you've got a whole range of different uh, terms for the same thing. So as you say, confusing, isn't it? Well, not necessarily because it's a developing area. And I can remember when I first started uh, studying law, which is actually a very long time ago. It's, believe it or not, nearly 50 years ago. Um, I found it really interesting because in those days, it was the end of the 1960s and the beginning of the 70s. It was a very different era where we had, we used totally different words, which today would probably be seen as quite offensive. Um, so therefore, you can see there have been a lot of changes that have taken place. Now, it seems that the nomenclature uh, has changed again since the 1980s in response to changes in, uh, in the labour market, basically. In other words, employment markets have, have changed and so forth. We, for instance, had things like the Industrial Relations Act, the Trade Union uh, Labour Relations Amendment Act, the Employment Acts, and so forth. And of course, we've got the new acts at the end of the last century, Employment Protection Acts and so forth. So you can see a lot of changes have taken place. Um, but um, in those far off days, of course, and I'm now referring to, which I lived through as an active member of a trade union and an advisor on employment legislation, the trade unions had a much higher profile than they do today. And of course, that's part and parcel of the reason why we've had changes in the name of this type of, of legal activity and different pieces of legislation and case law as various big events have taken place <coughs> excuse me, and being challenged by um, you know, various parties. Now, this is before, of course, um, the, the era I'm talking about, is before membership generally in the trades unions had uh, declined the way it has by almost a half now, um, as a result of a whole range of, of factors, legislative changes, economic factors, particularly self-employment, and the UK's move uh, move relentlessly towards uh, developing entrepreneurial cultures in which former employees have found themselves becoming employers. So there's been a big shift. And you notice I'm using those words, employee, employer, not master servant. And as I said, don't get confused if you're new to this, because we do use those older, somewhat Victorian terms in some of the case law in the past, but that's all been swept away. Now, Setting aside what we've been discussing, which are the cultural and economic factors at play, the book will continue, in our view, to be relevant to comparative lawyers in the UK for some time to come because it provides an interesting shift in perspective, especially to those specialising in what, we, what I would call, for the purpose of it now, employment law. Um, now, of course, labour law is what it's called here, but it's the same th to my mind, it's basically the same sort of thing because it's looking at the relationships. Obviously, there's the contractual, the tortious and so forth, but you are looking at that relationship itself. Now, as a restatement of the concept of the employee in European labour law, the book examines in detail the attendant problems and their possible solutions by comparing the differing approaches to labour um, issues taken in each of the uh, European member states, plus several others. We're not talking about political policy or party political policy here. We're talking, I think, strictly about the way in which our membership of the EU has modernised our stance on labour law, employment law, in this country. Uh, in my view, of course, to the benefit of all. Not, not everybody agrees with that, but certainly I think there has been a genuine benefit for everybody as a result of that. Whether we, what happens in the future, I don't know. Brexit is going to make a lot of strange changes. Now, the book, in our opinion, is therefore a monumental study, which interestingly does not confine itself just to the EU. It also examines the concept of employee in the 38 countries represented by the European Labour Law Network. 
of which the general editor, Bernd Vass, is the coordinator. So you are getting here a bit of a bonus, if you like, because it's not just about e the EU, it's much, much wider than that. And with the generous material support of the European Commission, the book obviously grew into a massive project which provides a comparative overview of its theme as manifested in the EU and in other states as well, including Russia, Norway, Iceland, Turkey and Switzerland. And the results are basically, in fact, eye-opening and certainly useful. This publication, says Vaz, aims to identify problem areas and highlight the solutions adopted in member states as clearly as possible. And I think he succeeds very much in his mission statement there. Unlike, of course, many a text on European law, this book is not necessarily orientated toward encouraging the harmonisation of EU legal systems. Instead, the aim is a little more modest, say the editors, in that the insights and information revealed will help to increase knowledge and gain a better understanding thereof. And really, that's the success, I think, of and, and the purpose behind these comparative studies and certainly in an ever-changing sort of expanding global um, area of legal activity we do need to have these comparative um, studies to assist us. I mean, one of the problems we will be grappling with Brexit over is um, the whole problem of what we do with what has been integrated as if you like European law into English law and we're going to have to look at all of those problems clearly in the future and this this area in particular labor law is is one big area let me conclude this then is the compendium as we've called it of comparative law which in one volume so far delivers the combined expertise and copious uh, research of its 40 or so international contributors and the result creates a picture of what the legal landscape looks like within a diverse grouping of nations the last one on the alphabetic list, of course, being the United Kingdom. And of course, we haven't actually left the EU yet, uh, you know, because that's for actually the 29th of uh, March 2019 at um, 2300 hours. Apparently, we've out now actually been given the, the, the date time group on it. So we know the moment we think we know what we're going to be doing at that time. I'm recording this towards the end of 2017, so we've still got a little way to go yet. Now, for your, basically for employment or comparative lawyers in the UK or abroad, this book with its wealth of references is an excellent acquisition for your bookshelf and the publication date is stated at the, as at the 27th of July, 2017. Now, whether um, there's gonna be any further editing of this in due course, I don't know, but I would imagine there may well be, because there could be a lot of changes taking place in the future, which we just don't know about at the moment. But remember one thing, we've been told Article 50 not absolutely chiselled in stone, so we don't, we, we assume the UK will leave the EU, but we don't know necessarily 100% whether that will happen. Looks like it will, but we don't know. There's the book again, because if we do, that's going to make some changes. There's the spine, and then there's the back. Now, just opening it in the middle, I say the heavy book. I'm looking here, the concept of employ the position in Greece. And you can see the structure. There's footnoting galore and nice lots of, uh, in fact, here you've got uh, basic subheadings, which are quite useful. The footnotes are very detailed. There's a lot of information which is there. And it really does depend on which country you're, you're looking at. So if I go right to the front again, you can see the various countries that are listed there on that page and so forth. There are 36 chapters in total. Well, I'd like to thank um, uh, Bernd Vass very much indeed and of course uh, Goose um, Herma van Vos very much for producing this work. I think it's extremely helpful. Very grateful to both Hart Publishing and Bloomsbury for taking it under their wing and we will uh, await new events in comparative law with bated breath. So until then, thank you very much indeed to everybody who's been involved in this excellent publication. Bye-bye.